presented in digital widescreen. Tonight on Live at 5, state lawmakers are optimistic about Monday's trip back to Springfield. But first, an agreement to resolve Europe's debt crisis. Good evening. All 17 countries that use the euro will sign a treaty that allows for unprecedented oversight of their national budgets in an effort to resolve the debt crisis. Efforts to get the other 27 European Union members to agree fell short. Britain, which does not even use the euro as its currency, remains opposed. The vast majority of European leaders came up with a new agreement that they say will bind the European Union closer together, at least when it comes to fiscal policy across the continent. The president of the European Council says the agreement isn't perfect, but it will require governments to treat it as binding. I think that there is also a very clear political message to the outside world that even if we're not all the, the legal instruments to en of enforcement, that via an intergovernment treaty, uh, we, we will be as binding, as binding as possible. Some people say they're concerned the European nations were looking after their own interests instead of their uh, embarking on a coordinated effort to rebuild trust within those markets. We're joined now by our financial analyst, Joe Stoll. We've talked a lot about Europe and this debt crisis, and I think it's important to explain what it means, especially to Americans. Well, actually, the first step was taken this week, and uh, the first step was ratifying these treaties to, to put some teeth in legislation to limit the amount of borrowing and spending the member nations of the European Union can, can make. Mm -hmm. so, so now that the limits are in place and they've got the, the treaties in place to enforce uh, the countries that spend more than their, their GDP could be forced out of the European Union. And a point that's important to make is it's important to Americans because we've sort of bought Europe's debt. Th that's exactly right. So uh, the European Union sold and, and bought each other's debt to a certain point when they, they could no longer go uh, into those positions where you, you were limited to the amount of Greek debt or Italian debt your banks were allowed to hold. Mm -hmm. So now they started borrowing money from the U.S. banks. So in order to, con to, uh, to disallow the contagion to spread to our banks, rules and regulations had to be put into place. And it's likely that they may do just what we did to get out of this, print money, or in their case, euros. They're going to have to monetize their debt. We had our TARP program that bailed out our Jenny Mays and Fannie Mays. Over there, they're going to have a similar program, a toxic asset relief program, where they're going to print euros to bail out the government debt, the Greek debt, the Italian debt, and so forth. So look for the European uh, currency to decline in value. Look for inflation to occur. As you print more currency, that's going to drive values up of the stock market and real estate and so forth. And quickly, how are the markets looking for us in America? Well, the markets rallied on that news. We had a nice bounce back today. The, the markets on a technical basis are kind of extended. Uh, so far this year, our markets have been flat. This news coupled with uh, oh, China dropping its interest rates, coupled with the fact that our economy is, is continuing to grow. We're growing quarter by quarter and, and the, uh, the unemployment levels continue to decline. I think there's real reason for optimism and a, a Santa Claus rally. All right. Well, we appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks, Ashley. All right. Well, the deal state lawmakers have tried to reach to keep Sears headquarters and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange in Illinois is likely to generate much more support this time around. Two state legislators who voted against the original plan say they like this revised bill. Republican House member Don Moffat and Republican Senator Darren LaHood both say the revised bill is much more attractive and is designed to keep jobs here. During a legislative Peoria City County breakfast this morning, LaHood says the state needs to make sure it's much more business friendly. We can debate each of these individual tax measures separately have a full vetting of them and then make a decision on those. So I'm supportive of tax credits and tax incentives that keep Illinois businesses here, create jobs, grow our economy, and I'll look at the other provisions and decide whether I believe those are good for our state. House Republican Don Moffat, who did not attend the breakfast this morning, says the revised plan will raise the estate tax exemption from $2 million to $4 million. Moffat says he thinks this measure will get a majority of House support, which will vote on it Monday. It will then go back to the Senate, which could vote on Tuesday. A shooting in the 100 block of South Mech Reynolds Court in Peoria left one man injured and an apartment building damaged Thursday night. Police say they located the victim at a residence in the 100 block of Village Green. The 28-year-old man suffered a gunshot wound to the lower back. 
He told police he was walking in the area of McReynolds when he heard shots fired, but he could not give a description of the suspect. He was taken to OSF St. Francis Medical Center. One resident at a nearby apartment says the bullets went flying through her walls and into her ceiling. She said she heard 10 to 12 shots fired just before noticing the damage. Police so far have no suspects in custody. District 150 is releasing information tonight about an attempted abduction at one of its primary schools. A district spokesman says Wednesday morning a student told Glen Oak school officials about the attempted abduction. Through the Sky Alert phone message as well as letters sent home with kids, parents were notified about the incident. The letter describes a man allegedly involved as a white male with freckles, approximately 5 feet 9 inches tall, 180 pounds. The district says it increased security after school Wednesday, but it's not related releasing details about the actual incident. Meanwhile, parents told News 25 the school was let out early Wednesday and all after school activities were canceled. The Peoria Police Department was not informed of that incident on Wednesday. The condition of the driver in a car crash that killed three teens has been upgraded. Morgan Blakey is now in fair condition at a Peoria hospital. Meanwhile, residents in the small community of Tuan are showing their support to the victims' families. Killed in the single vehicle crash on November 29th were Levi Berg, Kelsey Clifford, and Bradley Wood Jr. The teens were all students at Stark County High School. At the annual Toulon Christmas celebration, a wreath auction was held with all of the money going to the victims' families. An amazing $8,400 was raised. Students at the high school have also been selling t-shirts and coming this Saturday morning, the proceeds from the monthly Toulon American Legion breakfast will also go to the families. Well, the next time you're at the Peoria Airport, things may look a little different as you're driving in. Demolition work inside the old airport terminal building has been going on now for months, but today the first exterior demolition started. Crews dismantled the concrete canopy that was over the lower level of the old terminal. Director of Airports Gene Olson says the plans are to move the rental car area to where the old terminal used to be. Meanwhile, a big surprise today at the Head Start in Pekin was not the guest reader for Storytime. Rather, the surprise was for four-year-old Miley Atkinson, whose dad's been stationed at Camp Pendleton, California for the last three years with the Marine Corps. Miley's dad, Jacob Atkinson, caught his daughter a little off guard when he showed up in her classroom this afternoon. This is the first time the two have been together since May, but Corporal Atkinson says they have not lost touch. Oh, I contact her every day. I talk to her on the phone. On deployment, it was a little tough. You know, we had to go through emails back and forth, but yeah, it's mainly just phone calls. And get this, it will be the first Christmas the father and daughter have ever spent together. Corporal Atkinson heads back to California on the 27th of this month. Well, if you're driving through the heart of Peoria, you may be rerouted in traffic. Repair water line rupture near University Avenue and North University. No, excuse me, near Nebraska Avenue and North University. The rupture occurred on Thursday, and as a result, the left turn lane on Northbound University and the driving lane on Southbound University are closed, as are most of the intersection's turning lanes. The city advises motorists to avoid the area until that leak is repaired. But currently, there is no estimated time of completion, perhaps tomorrow afternoon at the earliest. Well, just ahead on Live at 5, if you still have some holiday shopping to do, we'll have some tips and ways to save you time and a little sanity. Also tonight, a new report reveals which cities in the United States are the toughest to find a job in. And taking a look outside through our Roadwatch camera network, a look here at Interstate 74 from Drees Lane. Traffic moving around just fine despite the snow we had last night. The roads were not a mess out there today. Let's see if we have any more snow in our forecast now with meteorologist Chuck Collins. Chuck? All right, Ashley, as advertised, anywhere from a trace up to an inch of snow around the area, a lot of it's melted off in the shady areas that remains. Now the cold air pulls in overnight tonight. We'll check out clear skies and temperatures really falling. We'll be in the upper teens later on this evening and uh, about 11 in the morning, maybe some single digit lows around the area as well. The rest of your weekend forecast is coming up. You're watching your home team at five with Ashley McNamee and Chief Meteorologist Chuck Collins. This is News 25 Live at 5.